welcome back to my channel um, and welcome to my very first speed paint video. Um, as you can see, I'll be using my Heavy Gouache paints in the sketchbook for this. Um, I've been lusting after them for a little while um, and I wasn't sure if they were a little bit style over substance, but I treated myself with some birthday money and I'm pleased to say that they do not disappoint. Um, I only really have cheap Dale Rowney ones to compare them to, which are really bad. Um, so <laughs> I don't have a great frame of reference, but so far I'm enjoying them, so so far so good. I'll be using a few different size uh, flat brushes for this, as well as a couple of smaller ones for the details. Also resting them on my lovely new brush rest from the Minty Mountain, which I will link to their shop below. <laughs> I'll be painting from a photo re reference for this. Uh, I know painting directly from a reference is a little bit of a sticky subject for some, but I'd never try and sell it as my own work or anything. Um, or try to monetize it in any way. It's just a bit of practice for me to get used to the paints um, and improve my skills. The photo I'm using um, to do this painting is by a lovely photographer called Charlie Tom. Um, me and my fiance have been on quite a few photo walks with Charlie and his work is really really lovely. Um, I'll be using one of his photos from his coast to coast zine um, which documents his travel, travels across America. Um, I've been sourcing lots of images from photo books in our zine collection um, and Charlie's work was a bit of a no-brainer to try and paint. Um, so I taped off my page with washi tape and um, used a couple of binder clips to hold the page flat. Um, I did quick sketch of the basic shapes of the scene. Um, I never really took art past the point of it being compulsory at school and I, I actively quite hated it. Um, so I'm still very much learning at the moment and I know that if I paint without a sketch underneath my portions um, will just go all over the place. Um, and I know I cheated a little bit with lining up the reference to my uh, page but I think I was getting a little bit impatient at this point I just wanted to get into the painting um, so please forgive my uh, my little cheat there. I started by painting the sky, um, quite a thin layer to start and then I build on it with a slightly deeper blue colour. Um, and I also learnt the difference between the two whites you get with gouache <laughs> recently. So you can get titanium, or it's also known as permanent white, and also zinc white. The titanium white, which is on the left of this set, is better for using um, on the base layers and highlights as it's more opaque. Uh, and the zinc white, which is on the right in this set, is better for mixing into other colours to lighten them. Um, I already thought it was great that this set came with two whites, because you, with gouache you use white all the time. Um, but yeah, I didn't know they were they were different, so always learning, always learning. So now I'm just painting in the base colours for the motel building um, and a few of the other areas. I'm a little bit annoyed myself because I looked at this, uh, this photograph and I said, right, I'm going to work from back to front, I'm going to build depth, I'm going to work on the background first and build it forward. Um, but as soon as I picked up my brush, I just completely forgot about that <laughs> and just went straight in. Um, I definitely painted things before I should have done, um, which made changing anything behind them a little bit tricky. Uh, it wasn't the end of the world. Um, gosh, is very opaque, so you can paint over them, but it does reactivate layers beneath, so a little bit tricky. Um, and I wanted to try and avoid unnecessary la layering if possible. So yeah, next time I will try and paint a little bit more methodically and not get too caught up in foreground details before finishing the background. <laughs> the dark colour I mixed here for the motel sign was one I used quite a lot for um, shadows and darken areas. Um, specifically sort of yeah for the sign uh, in the tree on the left which you'll see later on um, and just put some yeah some other shadows um, I try and avoid using straight black on a painting like most artists it's just too harsh um, stands up like a sore thumb usually um, but this deep blue was much more in keeping with the general colour palette of this scene um, and I'm, I'm quite happy with the colour I managed to mix
And here is an example of me getting caught up in details way too early, like I mentioned. <laughs> um, I fixated on these uh, these steps and railings in front of them um, way before I should have done. Um, those areas behind them that I hadn't even painted in yet. Um, and I hadn't even painted the ground in at this point. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit silly on my part, but you know, every painting is a learning experience. I will learn for next time and not do that next time. <laughs> So here I'm just mixing up some green to start the tree on the left um, and apologies for the massive chunk of footage that went awry here. I got so engrossed in the painting that I didn't even realise that my camera cut, cut out, which is a shame because I really liked painting that tree and I wish I had footage of it, but never mind. Um, like I said, still learning. <laughs> but during that time I also did all the details on the railings, you can see um, the shrubbery and sort of all the detail underneath the stairs. Um, I do add a little bit more shadow to that later on um, and to the tree. The green box I'm painting here is something I wish again I'd put a little bit more effort into. I think I kind of rushed the details of it um, and I just don't do it as much justice as the rest of the painting. Um, I do go back in again sort of later on in the paintings, add a few more details to it but yeah it's just not as good as the rest of the painting unfortunately. Here I'm adding um, those deep shadows on the tree um, with that lovely blue colour. I'm actually really happy with how that tree came out. Um, it's got a really nice range of light and shadow and it's got a nice shape to it. Um, and I know it's not the main focus of the painting but um, I think it's one of my favourite bits of it. <laughs> but yeah, added a few more details onto the motel with that same colour. Um, and then I move on to painting in the road in the foreground um, which I'm not sure if my colours were quite right for this um, I think they were a little bit too warm um, I do add a few little details in the background um, just to try and tie the whole piece in a little bit better um, but yeah I think it was just a little bit too warm um, I'll add a little bit of blue or something next time just to tie it together a little bit if, I'm not saying it looks bad I just I don't think my colour mixing is quite there up to one of the most nerve-wracking bits of this painting which was painting in the lettering on the motel sign. Um, I was terrified that I was going to start too big and have to squeeze the last letters in um, but luckily I pulled it off just. The E and the L are slightly squatter than I would have hoped or would have liked but I don't think unless I mentioned it you would notice um, so that's good. <laughs> The red lettering on the front of the building um, that you'll see me start in a second didn't quite work out quite as well as the main lettering on the sign. Um, my brush was just a little bit too big for it, I think, but I don't think it matters too much. You can kind of see a little bit what the writing is meant to say um, up close, but it really wasn't an important part of the painting, um, so I'm not too fussed about it. And we're pretty much there at this point. I added uh, quite a few details including the road signs and their shadows as well as a few highlights on the railings um, and that was it finished really. Um, overall I'm really pleased with the painting. Um, I plan to do a lot more studies of photographs in my sketchbook especially as we have a huge collection of brilliant photozines um, and books from really great photographers. Um, it's a great way to fill my sketchbook and it's a great way to learn how to paint different scenes um, and to get more used to my paints. Uh, I'm learning little bits and pieces from each one and hopefully I'll continue to get better and better and hopefully you'll see me get better as well. Um, I'm also sticking a copy of each reference photo next to the paintings um, in my sketchbook so when I'm flicking through I know which ones are from reference um, and sticking things in is always quite a nice little interactive element of the sketchbook 
uh, sort of lifting up flaps and <laughs> things like that. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I'll leave you to watch the final few minutes of this painting, including that super satisfying tape peel. Thanks again to Charlie for letting me use his image in this video. Um, I'll link his social media, etc. below. Let me know if you like this painting in the comments and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.